video gives the viewer a glimpse of the Royal Air Force Regiment celebrating our 50th anniversary during 1992, at which time I was the Commandant General of the Regiment. Many events were held at home and abroad throughout the year. The highlight of our Golden Jubilee was the Royal Review held at our regimental home at RAF Catterick in North Yorkshire, during which Her Majesty the Queen, the Air Commodore in Chief of the Royal Air Force Regiment, presented to the Corps her new colour. It was an event of great significance in our history and a family day greatly enjoyed by the many hundreds of past and present members of the regiment who attended with their relatives and friends. I hope you too enjoy the occasion recorded here and may the next 50 years be as glorious in the history of the RAF regiment as the past half century. Per audio. Nineteen ninety two represents the fiftieth anniversary of the Royal Air Force Regiment. This specialized formation within the armed forces was honored by Her Majesty the Queen during the course of this significant year to undertake the ceremony of the changing of the guard. The Royal Air Force Regiment, having first mounted the guard at Buckingham Palace on the first of April nineteen forty three to celebrate the twenty fifth anniversary of the formation of the Royal Air Force. This year's assignment was performed by the Queen's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force, which is manned exclusively by personnel of the Royal Air Force Regiment. The squadron is the custodian of the Queen's Colour for the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom. Besides the mounting of the Queen's Guard at Buckingham Palace, St James's Palace, the Tower of London and Windsor Castle, the squadron's primary role is to represent the Royal Air Force at all ceremonial and state occasions. It provides guards of honour for members of the royal family, for visiting royalty, heads of state and other dignitaries. The squadron is also renowned for the precision of its continuity drill displays. The Royal Air Force Regiment exists to provide air and ground defence for Royal Air Force airfields and installations around the world. At present, the Corps comprises 2,500 officers and men, incorporated into 14 regular and 8 auxiliary squadrons, all of which are represented here today at Royal Air Force Catterick on the occasion of the presentation by Her Majesty the Queen of her new colour to the Royal Air Force Regiment. Her Majesty the Queen is now walking towards the Royal Dais, preceded by Yeoman Warder Bryant, formerly a warrant officer in the Royal Air Force Regiment, and escorted by the Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal Sir Peter Harding, and the Commandant General of the Royal Air Force Regiment, Air Vice Marshal David Hawkins. Both the Chief of Air Staff and the Commandant General will take up position on the dais behind Her Majesty. The parade commander, Wing Commander Mike Evely, now orders the Royal Salute. The parade commander now approaches the royal dais and invites Her Majesty to inspect the parade.
today is indeed historical for the Royal Air Force Regiment, as Her Majesty the Queen is its Air Commodore-in-Chief. And the main purpose of a visit to Royal Air Force Catterick is to present a new colour to the Corps. It is actually 25 years since Her Majesty was last at Catterick, on that occasion to mark the 25th anniversary of the formation of the Royal Air Force Regiment. The Royal Air Force Regiment was formed for the purpose of providing close defence of Royal Air Force airfields. In January 1942, His Majesty King George VI signed a royal warrant for a corps to be formed as an integral part of the Royal Air Force. The first regimental depot was opened in a requisitioned holiday camp at Filey in Yorkshire with instructional staff seconded from the Brigade of Guards and the Royal Marines. Later, the regiment moved to Belton Park before establishing itself in 1946 at its present home at Royal Air Force Catterick. The Corps' first units were little more than platoons or flights in strength and equipped with a variety of machine guns and 20mm Hispano cannon. From these modest beginnings, the Royal Air Force Regiment developed two distinct types of squadron in response to the ground and air threats to Royal Air Force airfields and installations. The light anti-aircraft units were equipped primarily with 40mm Bofors guns, while the rifle of field squadrons carried the small arms and machine guns similar to army infantry units. Some squadrons had a flight of armoured cars as part of their order of battle. Warrant Officer George Bray of the Royal Air Force Regiment is now positioning the new Queen's colour on the ceremonial drums. The regiment saw action in almost all operational theatres of World War II. During the North African campaign, five field squadrons and five anti-aircraft flights earned a reputation as a robust and hard-hitting force. During the torch landings, the Royal Air Force Regiment moved inland from the beachheads at Algiers, Oran and Casablanca to undertake offensive operations proving that the best form of defence is offence. Royal Air Force Regiment squadrons fought alongside units of 14th Army from Imphal to Rangoon. Other Royal Air Force Regiment units fought throughout occupied Europe from Casino to Normandy and through the Low Countries into Germany itself. Men of the Royal Air Force Regiment were also the first Allied troops to land in Greece. Following D-Day, the Royal Air Force Regiment reached its peak strength of 85,000 officers and men, organized into 240 squadrons. Her Majesty is now returning with the parade commander to the Royal Dais. The parade commander will then request permission to carry on with the ceremonial. The parade commander now returns to his parade position and he will shortly order the old colour party to take post. Old 
colour is marched off in quick time to the strains of the Royal Air Force March Fast. The colour party consists of Flight Lieutenant Sebastian Kendall, Warrant Officer Brian Williams, with two colour escorts, Sergeant Ben and Sergeant Mitchell. As Old Lang Syne plays, the colour party, in slow time, march off the old colour past Her Majesty on the Royal Dais. A poignant moment for past and present members of the Corps. The parade commander orders the parade to stand at ease. He then approaches the chaplain in chief of the Royal Air Force to request him to consecrate the new Queen's colour for the Royal Air Force Regiment. Venerable Sir, on behalf of the Royal Air Force Regiment, we ask you to bid God's blessing on this colour. The origin of colours and standards dates back to the earliest days of society. As men grouped into primitive communities, it became necessary to devise some means of distinguishing separate families and tribes. In time of war, the badge of the chief was hoisted on a pole to enable opposing sides to recognise each other as well as providing a rallying point for an army in battle. Over the years, these badges came to symbolize the successes of the tribe or family in battle. It was in this way that these badges became the forerunners of our own present day military colors. May this color never be unfurled, save in the cause of justice. Recognition by the sovereign of the achievements of the Royal Air Force has been signified by the award of the King's and Queen's colors. The achievement of individual squadrons is commemorated by the award of ceremonial standards. And all operational squadron standards of the Royal Air Force Regiment are seen on parade here today. Parade of ten, come! Today's parade is being held in West Hanger of the Regimental Depot at Royal Air Force Catterick. The surrounding area has had military associations for almost 2,000 years. Under the Saxons, Catterick grew in prominence and prestige, becoming a city and the royal seat of the kings of Northumbria. 
the Normans built pentagonal earthworks on a site by the River Swale, which is now known as Castle Hills. The remains of the fortress lie within the station boundary by the eastern end of the runway and is a registered ancient monument. Cashrick declined as the town of Richmond, with its great castle, grew in importance. Royal Air Force Cashrick's recent military history dates back to September 1914, when an aerodrome was opened on 400 acres of requisitioned land. The Royal Flying Corps trained pilots here throughout the Great War. During World War II, Royal Air Force Cashrick was the home of no less than six nationalities whose flyers claimed 35 enemy aircraft destroyed. By the end of hostilities, the single runway could not be extended to handle the jet-powered aircraft then coming into service, and its active flying days drew to a close. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. In August 1946, the Royal Air Force Regiment Depot moved to Royal Air Force Cashrick, where it has remained to this day. Initially, the station functioned exclusively as a training establishment for those officers and airmen destined to serve in the Royal Air Force Regiment, both as gunners and firemen. Operational units arrive later, and the Royal Air Force Regiment officers and airmen who serve here today continue to be held at high states of readiness to respond at short notice to trouble spots around the world. Personnel have deployed from Royal Air Force Catterick to the Middle East, East Africa, Central America, the Far East, and more recently, as an integral part of the United Nations peacekeeping forces in Kuwait, the former state of Yugoslavia, and Cambodia. The new color party is now taking post, and the color bearer, Flight Lieutenant Mark Allen, is approaching the Royal Dares. He now salutes Her Majesty the Queen and will shortly kneel to receive her new colour on behalf of the Royal Air Force Regiment. Her Majesty, assisted by the Commandant General of the Royal Air Force Regiment, presents her new colour to the bearer. The parade is now addressed by Her Majesty the Queen. Air Vice Marshal Hawkins, officers, gunners and families past and present of the Royal Air Force Regiment. It gives me great pleasure as your Air Commodore in Chief to mark the 50th anniversary of the regiment by presenting you with a new colour. I know that you will guard it well, as you have the old colour which we have just seen marched off and which I presented to you 25 years ago. 
you can be proud of your 50 years of service. Units and members of the Royal Air Force Regiment have been on operational duty somewhere in the world at all times since your formation. You can be particularly proud of the major contribution which you made during the recent Gulf War, when nine out of your 17 squadrons were deployed. Today, you have standing forces deployed in Belize and the Falkland Islands and in Northern Ireland. Members of the regiment are also serving with the United Nations peacekeeping forces and on other special duties throughout the world, including Cambodia, Yugoslavia, Kuwait, and Iraq. Your professionalism has been evident in your ability and willingness to adapt to change. You have given the Royal Air Force a secure base from which to operate, and your successes have more than justified my confidence in you. You have continued to enhance your distinguished reputation in your operations with the Royal Air Force at home and overseas, and in the quality of your renowned ceremonial and continuity drill. Whilst you may reflect on your achievements with satisfaction and pride, you must also continue to look forward to the new and continuously changing challenges ahead. I entrust my new colour to you in the confidence that whatever tasks you are given or wherever you are asked to serve, you will do so in the highest traditions of your corps and service. The Commandant General now replies on behalf of the corps. Your Majesty, the Royal Air Force Regiment family, represented by those here today, warmly welcomes you to our regimental home. We are honored and delighted that you have joined us for our Golden Jubilee celebrations, which you have marked personally with the signal honor of presenting us with your new color, which we will guard zealously, display proudly, and follow unerringly as we have in the past. Your presence among us has given us all heart and renewed commitment to the defense of freedom in these uncertain times. Loyal greetings have been sent to you by all personnel currently deployed on operations and by those unable to be here from our various associations, many of whom founded the regiment during the Second World War 50 years ago. We are intensely proud to have you as our Air Commodore in Chief and delighted that you have personally presented new colors to the regiment on all three occasions during our history. Your color will continue to be a beacon and rallying point for us all, and will unite our close family in doing our duty to you, the Royal Air Force, and our country. We all thank you for your unfailing support and encouragement. Per adieu. The parade commander orders the parade to present arms as the colour bearer now marches the new colour on.
colour party comprises Flight Lieutenant Mark Ellen, who is the colour bearer, Warrant Officer Pasco Barkey, who is the colour warrant officer, and Sergeant Ash and Sergeant Hill as the colour escorts. The parade commander now requests Her Majesty's permission to troop the new colour through the support squadron. The escort squadron is the Queen's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force from Royal Air Force Uxbridge in Middlesex. Today's parade is supported by the band of the Royal Air Force Regiment which is also based at Royal Air Force Catterick. With a reputation for the diversity of its musical skills, the band is led by its director of music, Flight Lieutenant David Compton. It has an establishment of 42 musicians whose role in wartime is to act as stretcher bearers and medical orderlies, a task the band fulfilled during the recent Gulf conflict. The support squadron on parade today comprises selected officers and men from regular Royal Air Force Regiment squadrons and representatives from the Royal Auxiliary Air Force Regiment. Number one squadron Royal Air Force Regiment is a field squadron based at Royal Air Force Larbrook in Germany. Number two squadron Royal Air Force Regiment is a field squadron with an airborne role and is currently based at Catering. Number 3 Squadron, Royal Air Force Regiment, is currently based at Royal Air Force Aldergrove in Northern Ireland on internal security duties.